Hi, I'm Ricardo Ramirez. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biology at Utah State University and an extension entomology specialist. My lab and I focus on doing research on integrated pest management. And what that involves is looking at what factors might lead for a pest to actually outbreak. Um, how can we prevent pests from occurring in the first place? Uh, and when pests are actually present, well, we evaluate various strategies to suppress pests. So this can involve monitoring practices for improved timing of a management strategy, testing varieties for resistance to a pest, uh, testing current and upcoming pesticides, and also just evaluating other strategies. And this research is all done in an effort to improve uh, integrated pest management or IPM uh, approaches. Today I'm here at Greenville Research Farm in Logan, Utah, and I wanted to discuss um, what work that my lab is working on in alfalfa and also in corn. In alfalfa, alfalfa weevil is a primary pest that many of you have battled with at one point or another. Um, I wanted to talk about this alfalfa project because it's led by a team of researchers um, and our lead principal investigator is Dr. Kim Hegeman in the chemistry department at USU. We receive funding through the USDA NIFA alfalfa seed and forage uh, systems program and this team includes researchers from Utah State University both the chemistry and biology department but also the University of Wyoming is also involved with this in this work. As part of this project, we've been spraying alfalfa, this alfalfa in particular, uh, with representative insecticides used for alfalfa weevil management. The active ingredients that we've used include indoxicarb, so we would know this as steward, chlorpyrifos, and lambda Uh Dr. Hageman and her team of graduate students and technicians are actually testing the alfalfa leaves in this field to see how long these insecticides stay present in the environment. And so then we can determine what this might mean for pest toxicity. In connection with this work, Rose Sapesi, a graduate student working with me and Dr. Scott Bernhardt here at USU collected alfalfa weevil larvae. Um, remember that the larvae are the damaging life stage of alfalfa weevil um, affecting the, the alfalfa and that most of these insecticides are targeted against. Now, Rose actually collected those larvae and then evaluated the dose responses for alfalfa weevil of the various products that we were testing. What we can learn from this is what doses may be needed to be effective for weevils, uh, but it can also provide insight as to whether alfalfa weevil may be showing resistance to an insecticide. So in the West, there's been evidence that there are pockets of alfalfa pop weevil populations showing resistance to pyrethroid insecticides. Um, right now, we're at the preliminary stages of this work, and we will also investigate the effects of these insecticides on ligus and several beneficial insect species. Now, one way that this is accomplished is by conducting what are called bottle assays. Now, Rose actually started to do some of these bottle assays. They just consist of a, a glass bottle. And what you end up doing is adding different doses within a bottle. And these bottles actually can sit on, um, it's kind of funny, a hot dog roller actually, you know, so they'll just kind of roll around to evenly spread that, that dose. Now, once everything is evenly coated with these various doses, then we can introduce the, the insects that we collected from the field. Now, you can also do this from insects that you've raised in the lab as well. But uh, for this past season, um, Rose went ahead and collected those alfalfa weevil larvae from the field and then introduced them to these bottles. And we'll start to do this with different insects and to start to look at how these different in, um, insects respond. What we end up finding out is how sensitive um, or susceptible 
these alfalfa weevil larvae or whatever insects we're testing are to these different insecticides and the different doses that they're being exposed to. Again, this is research that's currently ongoing and so um, we'll be presenting more of those data as they become available uh, in the near future. In the meantime, I guess I'd like to point you in the direction of a few resources. Uh, the first one is associated with the Utah Pests, uh, which is a group that I'm associated with. Um, just to give you a little bit of time, I've provi provided a QR code. What you can do is use your cell phone, turn on the camera, and for those of you that want to try it out, um, basically just point your camera to the screen to, to capture that QR code. And what will end up happening is um, your camera will recognize it and it'll have a little icon that you can actually just push to go directly to the link to our website. Of course, you can also write down utahpest.usu.edu uh, to go to this site on, on a computer or on your cell phone as well. Um, once you're on the site, we have a menu there where you can select fact sheets. Um, within this Utah Pest website, there's the insects section for forage and field, and all the different insects that we have fact sheets for, you can you can find there. Um, on the website, you'll also find other resources for video fact sheets, where one of them has me showing how to monitor for alfalfa weevil using a sweep net, um, but there's other video fact sheets as well. And we also have a field guide um, for alfalfa pests and beneficials. The other site is the uh, extension.usu.edu crop site. And so similarly, uh, I provided a QR code and this was actually a code that was uh, provided to this event. Um, but if you go to this uh, QR code and, and go to the website, uh, you can then here select on crops and if you selected alfalfa for example you can select pests and look at the different pest information that's available for that specific crop and one of the ones that i wanted to point you in the direction of was uh, to show you that we've updated an alfalfa weevil fact sheet and so here i'm just showing the this updated alfalfa weevil fact sheet that provides information on the pest biology identification monitoring and also management and for other alfalfa pest information again you can go uh, to these various sites to find information both at the usu the utah pest uh, site and also the usu crop site In the corn cropping system, I'm leading a USDA NIFA funded project and a state water initiative funded project uh, that is investigating how water efficient technologies that include drought tolerant corn hybrids and irrigation types affect spider mite outbreaks and weeds. The team includes doctors uh, Steve Young, Matt Yost, Earl Creech, and Neil Allen uh, here at USU. My lab is specifically investigating the spider mite aspects of this research. And so, as you may know, spider mites are one of the, those pests that are well known uh, to outbreak under water stress uh, during those types of conditions. And uh, we know that Utah is pretty susceptible to drought conditions. Uh, from previous work done in sorghum, um, they found that drought resistant uh, sorghum actually had fewer pest issues when plants were drought stressed. And so we basically looked at these results and we wanted to test this under uh, looking at corn hybrids. And so uh, as part of this project, we're testing whether drought tolerant corn hybrids also show uh, this suppression of spider mites in particular. Uh, we've used a series of field plots and cage studies uh, such as the one here uh, right behind me to evaluate spider mite outbreaks. Now 
these are different uh, cages and actually they're large enough for, for me to, to stand up in. And while it seems crazy to grow corn in cages, uh, we use these cages to be able to focus on the interactions of plants uh, and pests. And so these cages are able to keep out predators and other pests uh, that can feed on our um, focal crop, and in this case it's corn, and to isolate the specific factors of interest. And so we pair these studies, these cage studies, with non-cage experiments and field observations. Now our cages are set up with drip irrigation, that way we can manipulate our irrigation uh, within cages, um, whether we want water stress or at least low levels of irrigation or optimal irrigation. And so within a cage then uh, we'll set up, up to have um, different types of varieties. In this case we have drought tolerant versus non-drought tolerant uh, corn hybrids. And we could set up multiples of these. And so then within here, we can then introduce mites, uh, spider mites to some cages and then keep some other ones free. That way we can start to make um, our observations on plant health, but also record the population of, of spider mites as they develop over time. Now, over the past several years, we've been uh, gathering a couple of different um, drought tolerant and non-drought tolerant corn hybrid uh, varieties from different companies. Monsanto, Pioneer, uh, and Syngenta uh, have been the primary uh, places uh, where they're commercially available. And so we've been testing all of these um, underwater stress, or at least with low irrigation levels, and then with optimal irrigation. Um, and from these, then, we can start to look at whether how drought tolerant plants uh, actually affect these spider mite populations. Now our results from the field and, and greenhouse and other supplementary studies that we've been doing uh, have shown some pretty striking results. Now um, here I'm just showing a couple of results where uh, we have two graphs, one from a greenhouse and one from a field study where some of the plants are provided with optimal irrigation. So whether that's volumetric water content um, at the high level or 100% replacement of evapotranspira evapotranspiration, um, so that'd be our optimal irrigation. And you'll see that the dots uh, for that on the left side are actually um, similar to each other. So there's mites there. They're not at very high levels, but actually when you induce water stress, so that's going to a volumetric water content um, that's lower or a reduction in that ET or evapotranspiration um, replacement, you actually see an increase in spider mites um, with non-drought tolerant corn hybrids. So that's the white dot. Um, and this is what we would predict, an increase in spider mites. But what's really interesting here is that drought tolerant corn hybrids actually have the same level of spider mites as optimally irrigated plants. So that's the black dot uh, to the right when you look at um, treatments that had reduced irrigation, but where there's drought tolerant corn hybrids there. And so this is really the, the main result of, of the findings that we're seeing so far. So our take homes for today are one, that alfalfa weevil insecticide research is ongoing, but recognize that uh, we do have a new fact sheet that's available um, and highlights IPM approaches for alfalfa weevil. Water stress can result in pest outbreaks. Uh, here that happens to be spider mites in corn. But as we start to do our research, we are starting to find that um, drought tolerant corn hybrids, which are meant to actually tolerate water stress, actually might provide a benefit by handling water stress, but also keeping mites at manageable levels. So unfortunately, uh, we couldn't have you here today, but I appreciate your attention.